Get ready as we take a journey into the world of literature. Welcome to the 21st Century Literature of the Philippines and of the World video lesson. Blessed day everyone! I am your teacher Christine. Join me as we gain new experiences while learning. Today, we are in Module 1 of the subject, 21st Century Literature of the Philippines and of the World. In this module, the most essential learning competency is identify the geographic, linguistic, and ethnic dimension of Philippine literary history from pre-colonial to contemporary, and identify the representative texts and authors from each region of the Philippines. After working on the activities in this module, you are expected to First, discover the features of the dimensions of the periods of Philippine literature. Second, recognize representative texts and authors from different regions. And third, value the importance of knowing the Philippine literary history, our local authors and their works. Now, let's get started! I have here the list of the different regions of the Philippines. Help me name these regions through matching the region number to its corresponding name. You will also be able to find this in your module, Activity 2 on page 11. We only have one minute to do this. Write your answers on a separate sheet of paper. And remember, do not write anything on your module. Your time is up! Let's see if you got the correct answers. You have 20 seconds to check your work. For number 1, we have letter B, Ilocos. Number 2, A, Cagayan Valley. Number 3, D, Central Luzon. Number 4, C, Calabar Zone. Number 5, F, Bicol. Number 6, E, Western Visayas. Number 7, H, Central Visayas Number 8, G, Eastern Visayas Number 9, J, Zamboanga Peninsula Number 10, I, Northern Mindanao Number 11, L, Davao Number 12, K, Soxargen Number 13, M, Caraga Great work! If you were able to get it all correct, then it's a double thumbs up. But if you had some wrong answers, do not worry. Still, you did a good job. Remember, there is always a room for improvement. And this video lesson will help you learn more. Now, let's proceed to the meat of the lesson. Heads up! Open your eyes and ears as we discuss about the dimensions of Philippine literary history and representative texts and authors from each region. First, what is literature? Literature plays a vital role in our lives. It mirrors human experiences and it lets you go around the world and learn and experience different cultures. It comes in various forms like poetry, riddles, stories, legends, etc. Before we land to the center of this adventure, let us discover first how it all began. Our first stop is the Philippine literary history and its dimensions. 
The first period for the Philippine literary history is known as the pre-colonial period. It existed long before the Spaniards and other foreigners landed on Philippine shores. Our forefathers already had their own literature stumped in the history of our race. The different literary forms are folk speeches or riddles, folk songs, folk narratives, indigenous rituals, mimetic dance, proverbs, and aphorisms. The second period is known as the Spanish colonization period. Spanish occupied Philippines in early 15th century. The Spanish colonization period has two distinct qualifications, the religious and secular classifications. During this period, the literary forms are folk speeches or riddles, folk songs, folk narratives, indigenous rituals, mimetic dance, proverbs, or aphorisms. Another period of the Philippine literary history is known as the American Colonization Period. Philippine literature in English is a direct result of American colonization of the country. This could not escape being imitative of American models of writing, especially during its period of apprenticeship. The literary forms during this period are free verse, modern short story, novels, and essays. We also have the Japanese colonization period. This period is considered the war years and period of maturity and originality. The literary forms are haiku, tanaga, and karaniwang anyo. And lastly, we have the contemporary or modern period. Many novels in English seem to have been written for literary contests like Palanca and Asia Man. The debate over textual and contextual criticism, balagtasisimo and modernism, formalism, and historical criticism has persisted to this day in the academe. The more popular but banal issue is called literature or art and propaganda. The literary forms during this period are chiclet, mobile phone textula, speculative fiction, flash fiction, blog, and hyper-poetry. The evolution of Philippine literature gave birth to famous literary text that still represents each region in the Philippines today. You may also find the list on page 20 of your module. Here are the texts and authors from Philippine regions. For Ilocos region, we have Papi Love by F. Chanel Jose. For Cagayan Valley, we have The Builder by Edith Tiempo. For Central Luzon, Florante at Laura by Francisco Balagtas. For Calabar Zone, we have Mariang Makiling by Jose Rizal. For Memaropa, we have Seven Hills Away by NVM Gonzalez. And for Bicol Region, we have Sarong Bangge by Potenciano Gregorio Sr. For Western Visayas, we have Monica by Ali Stan Gonzalez. For Central Visayas, we have The Clay Pipe of Marcel M. Navarra. For Eastern Visayas, An Iruy Ngatuna by Illuminado Lucente. For Zamboanga Peninsula, The White Horse of Ali by Inigdo Alvarez Enriquez. For Northern Mindanao, The Battle of Taguluan by Regino L. Gonzalez Jr. And for Davao Region, Love in the Corn Husk by Ida Rivera Ford. And for Sox Sargent, we have Indarapatra and Sulaiman by Bartolome Del Valle. For Caraga Region, we have Tuwaang Atense Wedding by E. Arsenio Manuel. And for Cordillera Administrative Region, we have The Wedding Dance by Amador T. Dagio. And for the National Capital Region, we have Pag-ibig sa Tinubuang Lupa by Andres Bonifacio.
To fully understand the paradigm of certain literature, here are the different dimensions where these literary texts are anchored. You may find the examples on your module. The first dimension of Philippine literary history is known as geography. They study places and the relationships between people and their environments. Example, in Darapatra and Sulaiman. Second, we have language or linguistics, a system of conventional spoken, manual or signed or written symbols by which individuals express themselves. Example, Monika. Third, we have ethnicity. This refers to social entities sharing real or putative ascriptive features like a common origin or cultural linguistic legacy. Example, The Wedding Dance by Amador T. Dagyo. Were you able to grasp the lesson? Did the discussion help you in understanding the lesson? I'm certain that it really did. This time, let us see how well you have understood the lesson. We will now be doing an activity found in your module in What's More, Activity 5, page 23. In this activity, you should be able to identify whether the excerpt is geographic, linguistic, or ethnic. Write your answers in a clean sheet of paper. Note that you only have 10 seconds to answer every item. When the time is up, the answer will be flashed on the screen. Let's start! For number 1. They still love each other, but they have to separate because their tribe's custom states that every man in the tribe should have one or more child that would carry his name. And if his wife cannot give him a child, he can marry another woman. It's a man's necessity to have a child. Oops, your time is up! The correct answer is ethnic. It is ethnic because the wedding dance is a story anchored on a certain norm and culture of a certain tribe. Let's proceed to the next item. Number 2 A very long time ago, the large island of Mindanao was completely covered with water and the sea extended over all the lowlands so that nothing could be seen but mountains jutting from it. Alright, 10 seconds is done! And the correct answer is geographic because in Darapatra and Suleiman is actually an epic which emphasizes the setting, which is a certain island in Mindanao. For number 3, Bisan pa man may yara na kahulsay, kaalikaya kagkatahom sa sulod sang balay nga ginatinguhaan ni Sita nga mapadayon tubtub sa iya masarangan. Time is up! Let's see if you're correct. The answer is linguistic because Munika is a story written in preference of a certain group of individuals who share the same language. Let's proceed. Number 4. The Savakan or bride wealth consisting of articles and wrapped food to be paid for by the groom's kinsmen are offered one by one until only the two most costly remain. One is given the value of an ancient gongs with 10 bosses and 9 relief rings. The other is redeemable only by a golden guitar and a golden flute. Another 10 seconds is done. Check if your answer is correct. The correct answer is ethnic because 
The excerpt actually depicts a certain wedding norm or belief of a certain tribe. And for the last item, number 5. It was a chilly night but Rihino was sweating in his foxhole in the beach of Taguluan, a town in northern Mindanao. It would be his first encounter against the formidable Japanese Imperial Army. Alright! Time is up! Let's find out if you got it right. The correct answer is geographic because it also emphasizes a certain scenario in a specific place. Did you get 4 or 5 correct answers? I'm sure you did! Good job! Now, you may proceed on the assessment part of your module, found on page 29. Write the letter of your answers in a clean sheet of paper. Remember, you only have 5 seconds to answer each item. Let's begin! For number 1 It is considered as the imaginative works of poetry and prose. Letter A. Literature Letter B. Convention Letter C. Genre or Letter D. Art Alright! Time is up! And the correct answer is A. Literature For number 2 This period is influenced by the birth of public school systems A. Contemporary B. Spanish C. American or D. Japanese Alright! Time is up! And the correct answer is C. American. This period makes use of figurative languages and other modern techniques. A. Contemporary B. Spanish C. American or D. Japanese Time is over! The correct answer is A. Contemporary Number 4 This period is considered the war times with influence on literary arts and forms. A. Pre-colonial B. Spanish C. Japanese or D. American There you go! The correct answer is C. Japanese. For number 5, this period has something to do with Alibata. A. Pre-colonial B. Spanish C. Japanese or D. American Alright! The correct answer is A. Pre-colonial Number 6 This period can be associated with religion and propaganda A. Pre-colonial B. Spanish C. Japanese or D. American There you have it! And the correct answer is B. Spanish Number 7 This dimension of literature tells us about places and the relationships between people and their environment. A. Ethnic B. Geographic C. Linguistic or letter D. Form Time is up! The correct answer is Geographic. 
This dimension of literature is related to a system of conventional spoken, manual, or written symbols by which individuals express themselves. A. Ethnic B. Geographic C. Linguistic or letter D. Form And the right answer is C. Linguistic This dimension of literature refers to social entities sharing real or putative features like a common origin or cultural linguistic legacy. A. Ethnic B. Geographic C. Linguistic or D. Form Good job! Because the correct answer is A. Ethnic And for the last item, number 10 The literature entitled The Widow's Son compiled by Mabel Cook Cole was told by this tribe A. Subanon B. Mandaya C. Bukidnon or D. Igorot Alright! The correct answer is A. Subanon Did you get 8 correct answers or more? I'm confident you did! Good job and congratulations! I am glad on how you have demonstrated interest and understanding of today's lesson. See you again in our next lesson. Sulong Idukalidad!